Well, welcome, Elaine. We're so glad welcome. you're here. Thank you so much. It's yeah. a privilege to be here. <laughs> Yay. For um, those of you listening, Elaine Staten has been part of our church family since 2019. And she is our friend from across the pond, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, a big pond. <laughs> a big pond. So you lived, where did you live prior to coming to the States? I lived in Newcastle, which is um, northeast England. Northeast, northeast England. East, yes. Yeah. That's uh, far away. 7,000 miles away or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, and now, since you've been here, you've done all kinds of things. You've been plugged into our church family since since that time. Um yes. I know you're on the prayer team. A lot of people don't see that, but you... I did not know that. Faithful on the prayer yes, team. Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. Do you have a pretty big heart for prayer? I do, yes. Um, after I went through a divorce um, in England, um, I, just, I was married 20 years and um, I was divorced. I've been divorced 27 years, I think it is now. So, But when I went through a divorce, I met this girl at church and we started a prayer group of prayer together and, it, and we then we ended up running a prayer school. Oh. Wow. So prayer has always been a big part of, of, of my life. Well, everybody's life, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> but, you know. but in a corporate setting, yes. that's, uh, that's yes. something that you love to pour into. Yes. The Unfortunately, a lot. I missed quite a bit of, of the Monday nights because of working. But, you know, I was there in spirit. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yes. That's awesome. You also uh, have been a greeter at the door. So you see yes, all I the love people that. coming through. I love that. Yes. And, uh, and then the choir. Yes, I beautiful. love singing too. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. If your voice is this beautiful now, I can't imagine how beautiful your voice is singing. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah, that's always been a, a big part of my of my life. Even when before I was a Christian when I was at school, I just was in all the shows. I just loved it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I could just listen to you talk. Uh, yes, just yes, please. Sing the whole time. I think there's something unique about the, the accents and I just think it's a beautiful thing. Yes, I listen to you <laughs> yes it is. We'll let you talk the whole time. Oh. About that. <laughs> Do you remember Remember when uh, navigation systems came out? Do you remember Garmin's? Oh what my goodness! You flashback. I Total totally know where you're going right now. So yes. on the Garmin, like the very <laughs> first like navigation systems, you could change a voice to a British voice. Ah! And I did that. Did you do that? I totally, totally did, did it. Mm -hmm. my, now it's, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you know, you can put his voice in your car and hear him talk to you. You know, it's so interesting because my daughter-in-law here. And her sister, when they were younger, they used to practice having afternoon tea and um, doing the British accent. And they oh. both said they were going to marry British people. And really? they both did. Really? Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Yeah. I, just went, I just went to a high tea recently. Yes, high tea. <laughs> I don't really know what that is. I didn't really discover what that was until I moved to Texas. <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. All the cute little things. Yeah. So did you always have high tea where you're from? Well, not always. But I, I, like I love stuff like that. Thing? Hospitality is another thing that I love too. Yes. So, um, I mean, I have the cup of tea. The cup of tea. is A cup um, of tea is a, a daily thing. It's yeah, it's a daily day. thing. But the high teas in England anyway is a bit more... Fancy? Yeah, a bit more fancy oh. and... And bigger, that's something you do as a special occasion, maybe, or have some or somebody around to invite people around. And I see. Yes. What it, other differences have you learned in your time here between the oh, UK and the States? I had not realized <laughs> that um, the, the, the words, the different words, and now I probably can't think of any, but oh, things like I'd say to people, oh, just pop over. And they'd like, like you what pop you, what? what? Pop, pop what? <laughs> what are we, what are we <laughs> popping? <laughs> yeah, what are we popping? Um, and the cultural differences, and I realised, I hadn't realised how literal British people are, like how literal I am. So I found out quickly, like, people would say things, and I would take them so literally, and then they would say, no, we didn't quite mean that. Like, oh, that's so funny. Thinking, oh, my gosh, I must be so literal. You have to tell me, and, like, I just took it, da, 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 you know. That's so great. <laughs> Do you have an example? Oh, this is a funny one. <laughs> right. I went to take my car in, and um, they did the, the tyres. I thought I'd got a slow puncture on the tire and he came back and he said well th I, we can't really find anything but just observe it right oh so so you, you know, observed your so tires? i observed it for four years <laughs> <laughs> no just would go look at your tire yeah, and stuff. <laughs> oh, for four and so years. eventually like he's going well i meant like you know if it was going down you need to bring it back you know and i was just came putting the air in putting the air in for four years i think you need a new tire oh <laughs> You said observe it, so yeah. I observed it. I, was, I can just see you in your driveway every day, walking out of your yeah. house, opening the door. I'm going to observe my tires before I get in the car and before I hit the highway. Yes. That's so cute. It needs a little bit more air. I guess yeah. I'm doing a good job observing it. I'm observing it. 
Oh my that goodness. That is so fun. Um, well, we're really glad at the time that you got to spend here. <laughs> and I want to know, how did you even get to Texas from, from England? Well, it's a bit of a long story, but basically when, when I went through the divorce, as I said, my eldest son, Anthony, he uh, went to Bible school and he went to Jerry Savelle's Bible school. And I was trying to remember this morning, I don't quite know how we chose Jerry Savelle's school, but we had just started to get into the word of faith. We just started to get some teaching from that. He went into Wales. He did his year there. Then he took his year out. And then he wanted to do his final year um, in the States here. Um, and um, so that all worked out. He came here. And really, he broke the mold, really, because none of my... My mum and dad, apart from my dad being in the forces and, and, and wartime, but... Um, other than that, they hadn't been even out the city, let alone wow. out the nation. So, he, to, some, wow. you know, your son going to America was quite a big thing. Yeah. Um, but he was uh, he was um, eighteen or just coming up nineteen, so he was quite young. We put him on the on the plane, and off he came. And it was like ten months later, he's married Lisa. Wow. <laughs> wow. He met Lisa here, and Aww. it was so funny. It was like, oh, I'm not going for a girls or anything. You know, I'm going to learn. And that's when God does yeah. it, right? And yeah. then Lisa, mm -hmm. this and Lisa, and I was saying, Lisa's in this conversation every time you speak. You know? <laughs> and I didn't meet, actually meet her until they were already married because of the visa situation, they got married in the June, and my younger son was then doing all his big exams at school, so I couldn't leave him on his own to do his exams and I couldn't take him out the exams. So I said, well, we can't do it. You know, we can't make it. But anyway, two weeks after they got married, we all, we, we all met together at Lisa's parents in Florida. So, and they went through, they said they were just going to do a blessing, but it, they went through the whole wedding again, you know? Um, so it was, it was just very precious. And I just, I just started to be able to visit. The Lord was blessed me incredibly that I think uh, the last count was 26 or 27 times I've been to the States. I managed to see all my four grandchildren just after oh. they've been born. Um, so th the, the United States was sort of like started to, to get into my heart, you know, um, and it wasn't just about the family. Yes, that opened things up, but I started to get you know, a love for the, for the, for the States. So when my youngest son finished university or started university, sorry, I left, I'm, I was able to um, sell the marital home. And so I thought, you know, all the students, they take a year out. I'm going to take a year out and I'm going to go to Florida to the kids. And, Aww. but to the visa situation was really difficult. So the only way I could get over was to do a student visa. Okay. And, and it was just like, well, okay, what do I, I don't really want to do something that was hard. I want to do my own choice. So <laughs> I, I like um, I like beautician stuff, you know. So I thought, oh, go, I'll go and be a spa and, and beautician. Oh, that's <laughs> so amazing. I researched it a bit. I got this international uh, academy out in Florida, and it was in Daytona, and I went I went for the interview. And a few weeks before that, the Lord had given me the verse about Abraham, get out of your father's and mother's country and go to a land where I'll show you. Um and, you know, I realized that means sometimes your culture, you have to get away from a set culture, you know, that you've been brought up in to learn something else, something yes. new. So um, I went for the interview and as I, they put me up in this hotel, it was right on the beach in Daytona, <gasps> the, the ocean waves are, are going, you know. And I walk in and in, in England, we don't have um, readily, some, it, not so much now, but readily Christian available on, right, on your normal channels on the, on a TV station. Okay. So I walked in and I got settled and I'm hearing the lapping of the water and everything and I switch on the TV and there's Joyce Meyer on the TV oh, and wow. she says that verse right there, there and then, exactly the same verse. She's preaching on that verse and I'm thinking, so is this the land looking at the yes. ocean? Like, is this the land? <laughs> yeah. like, is you know? and sometimes God just wants to get you away so he can speak to you in those yes. moments. How yeah. are, what? What God is so awesome with I his know. timing, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. So I went there for a year and when I actually got there, I had no idea. It was an international school, but I, I was sat in the school the first day and I was singing. I was tapping my feet, like, you know, to the music that was in the background. I was thinking, that's Christian music I'm listening to. Like, you know, that's why I knew the music. And um, it, anyway, long story short again, but um, it ended up that they were Christians and they introduced me to a wonderful pastor and his wife, Word of Faith. Um, church in Orlando and and so I got that was the beginning of my more intense and and um, bigger larger okay connection with um, word of faith people do you know word of faith church so that was really good I was part of their church for a while and um, I was part of the choir there too so we did all that and then um, 
because of the visa situation, um, I, ha- I had to go back. So after the year, okay. I, I, I came back. I went back to, to to the UK, but that was a hard time for me because for a few years actually, because it was like I had one foot in Florida that, that was well, the new United States represented by Florida at the time, um, and another foot in in the UK. You know, so it was like my heart was in two places at once, yes, and I was thinking yeah. it got so bad. I was thinking, Lord, I can't live like this. Like part of my heart's over there, and I'm over here, and I don't know how to get there, and all of the, the things. So that was a that was a bit of a hard time. I went through a few years of really battling with that, you know, like right. wondering what to do about that. Um, but anyway, God opened a door in 2009. I did, I, I was three years before that. I applied, started applying for the visa and it took me three years. Three to, years wow. yeah. of applying. Part of it was my fault. I miss, again, taking things literally. I, <laughs> I misunderstood. And so I would think maybe nearly a year when I was just sat waiting for them to contact me, they were waiting for me to contact them. Wow. But that, but other than that, yeah, I was there was a lot of hoops I had to go through. It cost me a lot of money. I had to go for medicals and, and, and all sorts of things. It was wow. It was a pretty long process. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the end of two nine, 2018, I got uh, an appointment at the visa at the embassy. And they just very straightforward, gave me the visa. And I was a bit like shocked. I think, like so this is it. And it was like funny. It was so funny because now she's telling me, and you, that was in the November. And she said, now you have to be out of England for this to be valid. You have to be out of England by February. Oh, so they, they actually tell you like, you have to be yes. out by this time. Yeah, right? like, okay, this. bye. Adios, you know. Wow. <laughs> Pack up your lives. See you later. Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. And then run. Yes. 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 Uh, so after waiting all this time, now I had like November, December, January, and I had to tell family members. I had to tell my mum at the time, and that was oh. that was a hard process. I'm just I'm just going to wow. America. And I, the the initial thing was five years, although my my visa, my green card is is for ten years, so 2028 20, actually. Um, but my in my head, I was thinking maybe five years, you know, and. Mm-hmm. Um, but that wasn't set in stone. That was I was feeling that was more p- my plan. But I I. I did have a sense in my heart, this is going to be temporary. But yeah. I, I didn't really want it to be, but, you yeah. know, that right. it was going to be temporary. So And so then Texas, is this where your kids were? Yes, my my family had moved back to Texas. They'd been here quite a while. I'd visited Texas a few times, okay. and there, there's absolutely nothing I like about it. <laughs> I, and now I, we're like tarantulas. Yes, yeah, like you know, the bugs. There's so many surprising elements oh, to Texas. Elaine, I feel that so much because I'm from Oregon and the Pacific Northwest is this beautiful, lush, oh, green forest know, right? and four solid seasons and snow in the winter and sun in the summer. And I, when we moved to Texas, I had the same experience. I'm like, yeah. what <laughs> is this place? Yeah, I got told. I got told off. Somebody is again. Somebody asked me a question. As English person a- answers your question. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So, 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 what do you think of Texas? Well, it's a very barren land. And then I got into <laughs> trouble. I got into trouble for saying that. It's um, a very barren. But land. It, to me, it was. I was thinking, where's the waterfalls? No where's the tree? You know, yeah. yeah where's oh, the mountains? Yeah. Where's the lakes? So it's just like, and then there's all these bugs you have to contend yes. with, and then this heat. And I was thinking, oh boy, like this is like. <laughs> Pretty, a whole so, new world. Yes. yes. Yeah. But um, my, obviously my grandchildren have grown up all over this time. So I've, I've been able to see them at least once a year up to then, but if not twice. But So I moved in with my, I, get, I arrive here and I move in with my son, who's not very far, it was then, not very far from the church. And um, <clears throat> and so I knew, I knew that that wasn't, that was just the beginning point. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, I knew mm-hmm. I wasn't going to stay there forever. But I, so I had to find my own place. But, you know, was, I was trying to get... And I, in my head, I thought, OK, I've arrived here. for probably about three months I'll acclimatise and then I'll start looking for a job. Well, two weeks after being here, oh, wow. <laughs> um, somebody contacted me and said, um, would you take care of my three girls, pick them up from school and the younger one and take care of her? So that's how the nanny thing opened up to me. Um, I'd never done it before. Um, I was I worked in the health service for 48 years in the... In, in the UK, so oh, wow. I retired from there, and uh, I did not want to work in a hospital environment here. I just didn't want to go back and do it again. Yeah. But I knew I had to do something just to alleviate the situation. So, um, so that's how that started. So I did that. I, I connected with Tonya at yes. one point with her twin babies. She watched. <laughs> she watched the twins when they were babies. Oh, oh so my sweet. goodness! Yeah, another Christian couple. I did their little son and. Um, 
cat. There's another. Um, I've done two, two, three families. Um, so that's sort of right. And then towards the end of 19, going into very early 20, COVID hit. Oh, yes. And my son worked in corporate events, lighting and the sound. And so everything, this shut, shut down. everything down. Yeah. So he he lost everything. He was doing so well. And then he, looked, he lost everything overnight. And they made a decision to, um, to regroup, to sell the house. Um, and go and stay with some friends that had opened up to them in Iowa uh, and regroup and find out what he was going to do. It was a bit, it was a rush decision, but I, I understand it was a very uh, pressured decision. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pressure on them and, you know, you've got four children, you to, you know what I mean? Provide, it was, it was, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm in, I'm just like looking at all of this, you know, and then they take me out for lunch this day and they sit across the table and I could tell my son can't hide anything, like can't give it away, but we're very similar. So yes. like, you know. I was thinking, yeah, this is, this is a nice lunch, you know, like, you know. Yeah. Well, we've got something to tell you. I've got something to tell you. And I'm really, really not happy about telling you, but I've got to tell you, you know, like, we're moving. The house is going up for sale and we're moving to Iowa. We're going to regroup and, and what have you. And um, and I, like, sat there looking at them. I was thinking, oh, my gosh, like, I've just come all this way. Yeah. and But I had such a peace. And then, you know, he was saying to me, you you can come with us, you know. And, you know, I think he felt a bit sort of, um, responsible, you know, he's trying to give me our options. Said you can come with us, but you know, you would have to get somewhere to live in Iowa. And and I'm thinking, I didn't come here to go to Iowa. I know nothing <laughs> about Iowa. Like you know, right? Um, I said we can, you can go back to England, or you know, you can stay. You know, you know, we just want to tell you this is, and it's going to probably start moving quite quickly. And so I sat there, and, and straight away just went. I didn't know how it was going to work out, but I just said, well, no, I'm staying here. And like my son's looking at me like. But you've got no family here, like you, like yeah. you don't know anybody. <laughs> like, no, I've, I've. Uh, by that time, I was in the church here. You were established at Heritage. I was established at Heritage. These, these, this was my growing family. I was meeting such wonderful people. I, spiritually, I mean, it was like every time I stepped into the building, Pastor Justin had read my mail. Like yes. it was just like word after word, and I was, I was just soaking it all up, you know. And I was thinking, oh, this is too good. Like, no, no, I'm just gonna have to find somewhere. So. As, um, I'm thinking, oh, you know, they're going to put the house up for sale. I've got about three months, I would say, you know, minimum to, to get things sorted. Well, they put the house up for sale on the Tuesday and on the Saturday it's <gasps> sold. And no they way. wanted a quick yes. sale. And I think, if I remember rightly, it was something like you have to be out in 30 days or something. So you're like, okay, well, we're so I was thinking, faster. Okay, Lord, like, where am I going to live? Like, you know, mm-hmm. anyway, um, Becky in the church, she, I'd made friends with her and, and we made an agreement like I'd go and stay with her and just for three months and um uh, and in that three months uh I had a hairdresser who was a friend of my daughter-in-law's and I used to go to hair and um I was telling her the story I said okay well like I, I don't even know I'm like I'm looking at places and, I, and condos and things like I just don't like them and they're too expensive yes. <laughs> do you know like and I, I yeah I'm just no I've got to stay here and she said oh, she said I think I think I've got the place she said uh, one of my clients her sister's re- renovating this house and um, she's turning in the, the top part into a self-contained one-bedroom apartment. And Aww. she's going to live downstairs and that'll be upstairs. And she's never done it before. And she's really wanting a tenant that's going to be faithful and, and keep the place clean and tidy and all of that. And he's quiet. And um, I said, oh, put me in contact. Well, it turned out that this lady's sister was new Lisa, my daughter-in-law, because the homeschool situation wow. years before that. So... Um, she that was a, like a road in so I went to and, and I'd, I'd been praying about it and I'd had my little vision board which you know hands up I'm not that brilliant with vision boards but I'd, I'd started to do it I'd started to say what I wanted to the Lord make my supplications and everything to God or what I want and I wanted trees I, I said I you yes, know I was going to send my like, vision board <laughs> for yeah. my next house I, I will have trees, trees. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> big deal yeah yeah and I said that was the other thing about Texas like I hate all this driving like if somebody says you know you've got to oh yeah come and see me yeah it's a three-hour drive and like yes I need I need a stopover in a hotel for three-hour drive like you know (laughs) (laughs) just like you know well not quite three hours but do you know it was everywhere was long I said Lord nothing I need to be everywhere I need to be within 30 minutes from this place from my accommodation (laughs) I you know if if I can do it in 30 minutes I've victory I can know? do it yeah <laughs> so um we so that was one of my things um and then I put this I'd, I'd taken a picture of the house and it wasn't that house I was thinking it was just put it on the board I'm I'm believing you for somewhere to live that was that type of thing 
Um, and I'll swing around to that bit because there's something really good about that. Um, so I go to see this building and she hadn't painted it on the outside yet. Um, she hadn't got quite finished. So I stayed with Becky another few couple of weeks, I think it was. And I moved in everything brand new. The rent she wanted, it was like, um, I would say half of what I'd been looking at. And she was including all the utilities. Wow. I mean, it was Praise just God. such a God thing. Yeah. Um, she'd got f- furniture. People gave me things. I got really good deals on things. And within a week, I was all set up and everything matched. Got all things God brought together. Wow. All the colors matched and everything. I, I sit still in daily just looking at that every morning just thinking and it has all the trees too that you and it has all the trees this is one and a half full property one and a half acres in trees and the thing that the lord reminded me when she did she said she was funny she said i'm going to paint the house this weekend on the outside but i'm it's a secret i want it to be a surprise and i I would just laughed you know i was like yeah it'll be good um but the lord reminded me when she paint she painted it like a, a navy blue color so it's blue and white and the Lord said, look at the picture of the house on the vision board. And it was exactly <gasps> the, the same. same. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. God is so yes. good. So it, even in faithful. all the details. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. The details always matter to God. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if we said this at the beginning, but one of the reasons that we are so excited to sit down with you is because God is calling you back to the UK, right? Yes. yes. Will you talk a little bit about what that journey has been like? Yes, it's been a bit tumultuous <laughs> because in my flesh, I don't really want to do it. <laughs> I just so, what that's like. Yeah, yeah so, um, you know, like going back. Um, but the Lord reminded me, you know, this was a temporary thing. And he, he's kept saying to me, um, I, he's put so much in me. And one of the, I, I actually went on a little mini retreat. I booked this beautiful place outside of Waco in um just to sit and, and just really find out because I was thinking, oh, this is, I, have I got this right? You know, you just have yes. all these questions. Sure. Um, and one of the verses was in Acts 15 and um, it was where, it wasn't the whole verse, but it was like God's, you know, when God speaks to you, it wasn't like verbatim that word for word, but it was just when the, he said to the disciples, all right, we're going to go back to that place and minister and see how you're all doing. Oh. And it was go back. And that was stuck in out to me. It says, go back. And then the minister part was, I feel like, what God's put within me to go back and do, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how that's going to happen yet. But to to take the richness of, of the word of God and all of, of what I've learned here to go back and impart that. Because it's very much needed in, in, the, in the United Kingdom. Um, so that, that was, um, and, and the um, message translation of um jeremiah 29 11 you know i know the plans here and it one in the message it says and i will take you safely back home so oh, that was the other oh, <laughs> so wow. it's like a confirmation <laughs> um that's amazing i'm so i just love when people hear from god yes. and it takes you outside of maybe what you were thinking or planning and god just orchestrates it all together yes. thinking about your time here what has god put into you to take back well, um, he's really built me up in the word of God. And <clears throat> I think going right back to my beginnings, my family, I wasn't brought up in a Christian home, um, but they, they were, you know, loving parents and everything, did their best for, with what they knew at the time and all of that. But through different situations, I won't go into, but um, they were survivors. Mm. And if anything that they taught me to do was to survive, which is not a bad thing. But that's all I knew was, well, you survive, survive. you know. We you su- made it through. I, I, you know, yeah. that was me winning. I, oh, I've survived today. I've survived, you know, I've yeah. survived that. So coming here, um, uh, there was a bit of, as I say, word of, in, word of faith input before this. Right. But here it's been like I've been saturated in it. And um, now that to me, now I'm, I no longer am a survivor, you know, like I'm a victim. I'm, I'm a, a vic- thriver. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. That's good. Yes. Yeah, thriver. So um, I feel that's that's that is what I, I I just want to encourage people. You know that there's there's better, there's more. Like Jerry Savelle was talking on Sunday, there's more. There's always more. There's a flourishing place. It's you know he always can bring something good out of something. Yes. So I feel like it's it's more like to be a winner. That's yeah. what that's what it, it, it it's. 
<laughs> I was about to say this is going to go perfectly into yeah what what to you is making a winner in life because that's our motto here at Heritage and it sounds like you got exactly what you needed in your season here. Like you said, you came just like a sponge, you absorbed it all, and now you're going to go pour it all out yes. to people that need it. So what to you is making a winner in life? Well, if I, if I can leave with, with anything is, as a single woman, I know how hard it's been, you know, to, to, and that's what single women are on my heart. I want to, but I mean, it's everybody, but if I'm talking to a single woman right now, I want to say, you know, the, the, the winner part is there is life after divorce. That's good. And there is um, light after darkness. There is joy in the morning. You know, there, there is beauty out of ashes. And God's done all that for me. I have so, you know, I just, I've got so much <laughs> story after story of just how faithful he's been. Um, just in, in finances alone, like um, at one point in my life, I had, um, my friend got a financial advisor. I was in the UK and, and she'd gone through a divorce and she got this guy around. And I thought, oh, we can, if there's anything else I can do better, you know, show me, you know. Anyway, he, he, get, went, he went away with all the paperwork, came back, and he went through hers, and he looked at me, and he said, well, i I got nothing else to tell you because I don't, I can't explain, and I don't know how you're living, the lifestyle you're living with what's on paper there, with what your finances. And that's been the story of my life, really. I mean, yes, I've, I've worked. Yes, I've done sure. things. I've had a, a career, but um, uh, it, it's just always gone further, you know, to nobody on my salary I bought two boys up on something like 12,000 well equivalent 14,000 dollars a year or something like that ridiculous amounts of money do you know like wow and I came to the UK uh, the USA for um 26 times 26 27 times and I've been all over Europe I you know like it's mm-hmm. just um and God made a way different ways for that to happen it yeah. wasn't just in finances but do you know like that sort of lifestyle that, that it's just that's a winner's lifestyle to me Mm-hmm. you know like to enjoy like your life and yes there has been down times yes there's been difficult times but what I'm saying is God's got the other side he always says he's taking us to the other side and you know there is another side yes that's so true that's yeah. right yeah there is another side and what I love 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 about our house is there are so many stories where God has restored people together yes. whether it's been um after divorce or after heartbreak and this is this house heritage is about restoration yes and it's about flourishing i mean it rains on the just and the unjust right yes like like this is the human existence that we have but we have promises and it sounds like just again hearing more of your story that god has God has used your life as an example of how he can take you from a survivor Mm -hmm. to this victorious woman of God that's going to go and make a great impact on the United Kingdom. I pray so. I pray so. I mean, one of the other things maybe I should just mention that's been very important to me all this time is that the nannying, you know, came Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, And then um, I was approached by, well, I didn't realize at the time, but it ended up being a a lesbian couple that that came. Um, And they'd adopted this little boy. And so he was six months old. And so... Long story short, that I I went to work there, and I just felt like, well, okay, the Lord sent me there for that little boy, do you know? Yes. And um, and so I had him till he's three and a half years, and I remember just two weeks before I all this started to evolve that I was leaving, um, I'd said to somebody, well, really the timeline will probably be geared by the fact that if this job, if this assignment comes to an end, you know, because. I really am done. I don't, I've been worked 50 years this year and I don't want to do, yeah. I don't really want to do much. And I've said to the Lord, like, I'm not adverse to work, but you'd have to bring it to my door. I don't really want to go looking for it now. And um, right. so if that came to an end, then I would be looking at, you know, my asset, my home is in, I, I rent my house out in the UK. So I would have to go back and it didn't seem to make sense to use my savings just to rent a place here, beautiful though it is. Yeah. To, to do what, do you know what I mean? It mm-hmm. was, it, nothing else was like evolving. So um, two weeks after I made that comment, um, it all suddenly came and they, they were so like, so, oh, we don't know how to tell you, but you know, we're going to have to put him into daycare. Be, um, and um, that's what they wanted to do. So they were very, very appreciative of me that, um, you know, I've just, I've just, um, just loved these people. Um, I know there's, the wrong side to things but I've just I've just been in there and just take the light of Jesus in there right. and I believe I've imparted seed there 
and particularly over the little boy. Um, I just speak, I speak to his spirit every day and I believe that he's going to be um, s- instrumental. I'm not underestimating the seed, the power of the seed that I've sown into that life in this time. And I believe it wasn't just a nanny and job, it was an assignment. So Yes. Oh, yeah. So that was really as well part of this all coming to an end. Um, and it was funny because right from day one, I used to call him um, a warrior and a soldier for God, and he would know God and do great things because yeah. he would know his God and all of that. And then one day I just I just um, looked up his name, and his name meant warrior and soldier. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes. So like it was like an undermining of uh, an underlining of that, you know, that um, yeah. he's going to be instrumental in that family. Yes, he is. So, yes. Yeah. It's all that seed and all that time that you sowed into them. God always has multifaceted purposes. But yes. what if the whole reason for you being over here was for that boy? Yeah. And I sometimes I'd say to him, you know, what? the, the Lord sent me 7,000 miles yeah. to just, just for you. Oh, <laughs> we feel so loved. It's so oh, special. my goodness. Yeah. Well, we can't leave this time uh without doing one more thing and that is just declaring and speaking in agreement with what god is doing in your life and praying for god to to not only open doors but that just your travels are covered by the blood of jesus that there's always angels encamped around about you and we are yes we're sad to lose you but we're not really you losing you we just no we're all family right we're We're all all still family family. (laughs) um Kenna, would you pray I would over love to pray. Yes. I'm, I'm going to cry the whole time. Do it. You're going to try like, and do it in an English accent, yes. aren't you? Yeah, no, oh, <laughs> you know I've been around people for so long, I like adapt how they talk. <laughs> it's just a real fact about me. <laughs> so anyways, before I even got in here, I was talking like with a little English accent. But. <laughs> anyways, but yes, I would love to pray over you in this new season that you're entering into. Father God, mm. I thank you so much for Elaine. I thank you for the time that she's been able to share with Heritage, Lord. She talks so much about how we poured into her, but she was also an equal yes. blessing back into our congregation, Lord. We thank you for the time that she was here. We thank you as she enters into this new season, Lord, that you give her divine peace and divine understanding as she takes each step of faith, Lord, that you lead, you guide, you direct her, Father, and that in the times and the moments where she needs to feel your comfort, where she needs to have an answer because that that's going to happen, Lord, that she leans back to that scripture that you gave her when she went away with you and she let the Holy Spirit speak to her, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that she leans into that word and that she takes it with her on this new journey, Father. I thank you that she's going to pour out into these women's lives that need this word of God, Father. And I thank you, Father, that you continue to use her in magnificent yes. ways, ways that she can't even see right now before her eyes, Lord, that you have a bigger and a more divine plan. And also that she enters into her new home in this new season, yes. Lord, that you surround her with your presence and your peace, Father, and that your Holy Spirit just moves within her so she can pour out into others, Father. And I thank you, Father. We celebrate this time with her. We celebrate this new season. And thank you for all the years that we've had with her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. (laughs) And I know I didn't, I wish I had more time with you because I I actually met Elaine in the bathroom. And I think we actually came around the same time. Because I had just joined yes. Heritage yeah. not long I at, remember around the same time. Because yeah, it was right before COVID. I think we talked about that. You mm-hmm. talked about your son. Yeah. We met at the Heritage bathroom, and it was lovely ever since. But <laughs> I wish I had more time, too. Divine appointments you. all over the That's property, right? right? That's right. That's well, right. From yeah. our church family, we love you, and oh, we I are so too. thankful that you've been here for the time you've been here. And God has just got some really amazing things in store for you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I just appreciate everybody. I just say thank you. Take the opportunity now to say thank you to everybody who's just been a blessing to my life. Thank you. We're going to have to come have high tea with you sometime. Yes, definitely. Yes. I, my, I, I mean... I, the, my new home, I was definitely getting a guest room set up because it's all these people coming to yes. visit. <laughs> yes, yes. Tea in expectation. Yes. That's yes. right. Yes. Everybody's going to come visit. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Elaine, and thank you, church family, for listening and for connecting with Elaine as long as she was here. Um, I'm trying not to cry. Oh. <laughs> um, when this goes live, I think Elaine will be on the road. Oh, so yeah. when you hear this, pray over her. Yes. Yeah. Speak blessings over her. And, of course, join us next week for another <laughs> winning conversation. <laughs>